What is an emergency protective order? If you're watching this video, chances are you've been recently arrested for domestic violence and you've been served with a emergency protective order. If that's the case, I'm sorry to hear. Don't freak out, stick around. I think you're gonna like this video. I've been a criminal defense attorney here in San Diego County since 2004. My firm handles exclusively criminal defense. My firm is Dodd Law here in downtown San Diego. We also have a virtual office up in the North County Vista right across from the Vista Superior Court. Now today what we're going to talk about is what is an emergency protective order? Now how does this even come into play? So what happens is you have recently been arrested for domestic violence. There was a dispute, there was an argument, the police came, you were arrested. And now you have been served with a five day emergency protective order. Now, what is that? So I have several videos on domestic violence. I give a free consultation on domestic violence. So after you watch this video, you can scroll through and watch all my other videos on domestic violence as well. But this video is strictly what is that emergency protective order? Now, anytime an officer comes to the scene of a domestic disturbance here in California, someone's gonna go into jail. It's just a mandatory arrest policy. I have a separate video on that. You can watch after this video, but you've been arrested and now what the police do to protect the public and to protect the alleged victim and to make sure that they're fulfilling their duty is they ask the alleged victim in the case, the accuser, if they want to stay away from you for a period of five days and they can get an emergency protective order. So the accuser says yes, the officer fills out the paperwork, gets an on-duty judge, the judge signs off on it and there you go. You've been served with a five-day emergency protective order. So you're all stressed out, you've had a long night, you're in jail, you just post $50,000 in bail you know, to get out and now you can't even go back to your residence. You can't even have contact with this accuser because you've been served with this typically five days of an emergency protective order. You cannot call, you cannot text, you cannot annoy, you cannot harass, you cannot be within a certain amount of feet. You can't have anybody even indirectly contact them. You cannot go back to whatever residence is listed on that emergency protective order and we get these calls every day. Dodd, what am I supposed to do? All my clothes are there. I live there. What am I supposed to do? Well, unfortunately, there's very little that you can do unless, you know, family members or somebody were able to get all your stuff from the house. You just gotta abide by that five-day protective order until the five days are up. Now, what happens if that five-day expires. Now, you got to be careful because what the officers are going to do is they are going to advise the accuser that this five-day protective order is temporary and they're going to give them information on what they need to do to go down to the courthouse, whether it's downtown. They're going to go down to the downtown courthouse, whether it's El Cajon, they're gonna to go to the El Cajon courthouse, whether it's in the South Bay area, they're gonna to go to the Chula Vista courthouse. If it's in the North County, they're gonna to go to the Vista Superior Court. The officer, the arresting agency, will advise the accusor that this emergency protective order expires in five days and give them their rights after it expires. And what they can do is they can then go down to the courthouse and apply to get a permanent restraining order. So the common situation is this, you know, we get the call, you know, it's the fourth day of the emergency protective order. And, you know, they're all excited because in the next few days, they're going to go be able to go to their house and, you know, get all their affairs in order. Well, here you go. You've just been served with a another protective order. And now you have a court date for that case. Now keep in mind that the court date on the new, we call it restraining order, 
is different than the court date on your criminal case, okay? So you gotta keep that in mind that these are two separate issues. We have a criminal case, and you can watch all my videos on the criminal part of the domestic violence. And then if you're served with this restraining order, you're also gonna have a different court date in a different courtroom for the restraining order hearing. Now that's a whole separate issue. So today, all we've been talking about is that five-day protective order. And unfortunately, if you're served with that five-day protective order, you, you have very limited rights. You know, we get a lot of cases where your whole life, you know, is in that house. And sometimes, you know, the accusor's family member can reach out to you and bring all the stuff to your house. But typically, you can't even have any indirect contact. Some indirect contact meaning you can't even have a third party. Now, there are some situations where we can contact law enforcement and let law enforcement know that you would be accompanied by law enforcement because you have some very important items in the house. For example, if you have heart issues, you need to go get your heart medication, your blood pressure medication, you have diabetes. If there's something extremely, extremely important that you need to get from that house, you can get a police escort to go with you and to get whatever you need. But here's the deal. Let's say the five day protective order has expired, right? Now we're still dealing with the criminal case. Just because that five day protective order expired doesn't mean that the protective order just goes away altogether. Because remember, the accusor has the right to go get a restraining order in a different court. And in the event charges are filed at the arraignment, the DA will be asking for a full on protective order again during the pendency of this case, okay? So this is very confusing. And this is where a lot of people that are accused get in trouble, right? Because let's say the five-day protective order expired. You're allowed to go back to the house. The accuser never filed another restraining order against you, but now you're going to court. And you go to the arraignment and you show up with the accuser. And now the judge and the DA are telling you that you cannot have any contact with this accuser pending the outcome of the case. So just because that five day protective order expired, just because you were never served with another restraining order, when you go to court on your arraignment for your domestic violence case, it is very likely that you're gonna get hit with another protective order, a stay away order, a criminal protective order, and what you can do at that point is the accusor could be in court and could tell the judge that they are not afraid of you and that they do not want the protective order and they want to be around you. And typically if you have, if you're married, you have kids together, the judge could potentially issue a no negative contact order. What a no negative contact order means is that you can have contact with the accuser, you just cannot have any negative contact. Now what's negative contact? Obviously, no arguing, no striking, no harassing, no fighting, none of that. Because if you do, you will be violated. And next time you go to court, you could be taken into jail because you violated that protective order. Now to summarize, you've been arrested, you were served with this five day emergency protective order for five days, you can't have any contact with the accuser. You can't go to the residence that's listed on the order. If there's any children involved in that order, you can't have any contact with those children as well. Within those five days, you could get served with a restraining order. If you don't get served with the restraining order, the protective order then expires after five days, but you're still not out of the woods because when you go to court, the judge and the DA could then issue a protective order. I know this is a very, very confusing area of law where a lot of people, a lot of our clients get in trouble because they don't understand it and they end up violating the terms of the protective order. Well, Dodd, I thought the protective order expired. Well, you were served with another one. Well, Dodd, I thought I had the protective order expired. Well, the judge and the DA asked for one and they issued it. If you have any questions, you can give us a call and we can give you a consultation. Our number is 619-814-5110. You can call 833-4-DOD-LAW. Again, my firm is 
Dodd Law. The email is www.dodlaw.com. If you've recently been arrested for domestic violence, I'm very sorry. I have tons of videos on domestic violence you can watch after you've watched this video. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel. You can also hit that notification bell. Whenever I put out a video, you will be notified. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Don't stress out.